Hello, this is Skylar, and welcome to Java Programming Lesson 2. Last time we talked about the basics and got up to printing. Today we're going to talk about variables. So let's get right into the material. Many of you are probably well acquainted with the most famous variable x. We use the variable x in mathematics classes to represent some unknown value. Usually, in algebra, we would solve for x, something like this. Now, I'm trying to avoid horrific algebra flashbacks that some of you might be having, but if you're really not a fan of math, don't worry. Variables are used quite differently in programming than they are in math. The important similarity is, though, when you see the variable x in an equation like this, you recognize that x is not just the letter x. It, in fact, represents a number, and in this case, the number 4. So when we see variables in the code, we will know that it isn't just a variable name, it is representing something else. A handy visual way to think of variables is to imagine boxes inside of your computer. So whenever you create a variable, you have made an empty box. In this case, we have a box named x. So we can store the value 4 inside of this box, so now we have a variable named x that stores the value 4. In programming, however, we can store more than just numbers. You can store letters, strings of letters to make sentences, and much, much more. Another important difference between math and programming is that in math, variable names usually have single letters like x, y, z, or maybe a single character from the Greek alphabet. In programming, you can name your variables whatever you would like, as long as the name does not start with a number. So now that we have a basic grasp of what variables are, let's see how we use them in the code. I have here a new empty project named variables. Let's say I want to create a variable in this new project. There's a consistent format that you will always use when creating variables. First you write the type of the variable, then a space, and then the name of the variable, and then end with a semicolon. So you write the type, the name, then a semicolon. So for example, let's say you wanted to create a variable that will hold a number. You would, at least in thought, write number, then the name of the variable. But you see, Java won't let you do that because it doesn't understand the type number. Instead, it splits numbers up into two smaller types. Those types are integers, or int, int, and doubles, or double. Now integers, you might have heard of them before in math class. An integer is a whole number. So like 0, 1, 2, 3, negative 1, 10,000, these are all integers, and you can store them in an integer variable. Doubles stand for double precision, which means double the precision. You can store more info in them, so you can store fractions. It's like 0 0.5, 0 0.00001, negative 0 0.00001. These are all numbers that you can store inside of a double variable. So how do you actually do the storing of a number in a variable? It's actually quite simple in programming. You just say x is equal to 42. So I have now created a variable x, which is an integer, and then stored the value 42 in the variable x. Likewise, for the double, I can just say y is equal to 3.1415, and now I have stored 3.1415 in the variable y. That's good for numbers, but now how about characters and, and statements? So the first thing we're going to do is the character variable, or car. And character, of course, means you can store a single character or letter into it. So you can store A, B, C, D. You can also store special characters, like exclamation points, in it. But now let's say I want to store the uppercase letter A in my variable it's going to give me a problem. Underlines the letter A here. And the reason for this error is what if I made a variable called A earlier on in the program? How does the compiler know the difference between this A here and this A here? Well the solution to that is single quotations around the letter A and now the compiler knows that this is the character A and not the variable A. So when you're using characters surround them in single quotes. So now variable z holds the character a. Now the last type of variable we're going to talk about is the string variable. I'm going to name this string wombat because I wanted to. 
Now strings, I actually don't know what they stand for, but I'm going to assume it's string of character because that's exactly what they are. They're strings of characters. Anything you can type, you can put into a string. Now it's important to point out that characters you put around, you put single quotes around, strings you use double quotes. So when I want to set this wombat variable equal to wombat, I put it in double quotation marks, kind of like when we were writing the Hello Universe program. Okay, so now we have four variables here and four different values stored in them. Let's do a rev review back to the first lesson and let's print them out. So system.out.println, as you should remember, before we wrote, you know, hello universe and we printed out the string hello universe. But now I want to print out the variable. So it's actually extremely simple. I just say print line and I put x in there to print out the x value. So if I compile and run this, and we look down here, you can see that it prints out 42, which is exactly what we stored into our variable. But right now, if I were to just see this output, it's kind of confusing. Like, it doesn't tell me what this number means or anything. So let's add a header to our print. So system.out.println x is equal to. So now, when I compile and run this, it's going to say x is equal to 42. Well, that's well and good, but it's still a little bit awkward because the x is equal and the 42 are on separate lines, how would I print them out on the same line? Well, I can use a different function. Instead of the print line function, I can do just print. The difference between print and print line is kind of like pressing the enter key on the keyboard at the end of the print line. It will create a new line, whereas print will not. So when I run this, it says x is equal to 42 on the same line. Woo! Beautiful. So I can do this for all of my variables. And I'm going to cheat here. Oop. I'm going to change this to wombat. There we go. And then when I compile and run this, there we go. It prints out all the values that we stored into our variables. Very good. And that concludes our first lesson on variables. Next time, we're going to talk about manipulating variables. And soon after that, getting user input. So thank you for following along. I'll see you in lesson three.